Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening for all the folks who are watching from different parts of the world. Uh, it's great to be here back looking at the energy uh, of folks, uh, especially in the product community. Um, I, I still remember a few years ago uh, when Carlos had reached out to me asking um, you know, if I'd be interested in uh, teaching the first cohort of product managers uh, in, in Seattle. And uh, you know, I, I took that exciting opportunity, and it's, it's great to see how much uh, you know, the products school and community has grown uh, over the years. So really fascinating to see. So I'll start off with my journey and you know, how, uh, how, I, how I got into product. Um, and you know, um, I'll also share some of my experiences from, from Atlassian, um, as well as uh, you know, some of the tips for today's product leaders um, on how they can leverage some of these things to uh, really grow their career. Um, all right, a quick introduction about myself. Uh, I'm a VP of product here at Atlassian, where I lead our uh, product-led growth org, uh, monetization, and customer acquisition teams. Um, I have been in the tech industry for uh, over 15 years now, and uh, that includes um, launching consumer products uh, from zero to one at PayPal to leading growth at uh, Microsoft Azure, as well as building marketplace products uh, at Zillow. Today, I'm going to talk about something that I'm really passionate about, uh, which is product-led growth. I witnessed firsthand the, the power of product-led growth when I was leading a launch of uh, uh, Azure's free tier, which is a, a, a freemium model. And um, you know, we essentially took a core PLG concept and transformed that into a powerful growth engine uh, at Azure. And, it became, uh, it, and that really helped it become um, the fastest growing business in the, in the history of Microsoft. Um, today, um, the, the three things that I, I would love for you all to take away from this talk is really understand what product-led growth is. Uh, I'll share some of my, my own experiences at Atlassian on how we do it. Uh, and Atlassian is also one of the pioneers of product-led growth along with companies like Slack. Uh, and lastly, uh, you know, so, some tips uh, and, a, and a toolkit that, that you could use to scale your products as well as your company. Uh, so here's the agenda for today. Uh, you might be wondering what does a car has to do with uh, product-led growth. I always like to start with analogies to explain uh, you know, co uh, concepts that are not very straightforward. Um, when, you, when you go shopping for a car, you know, the first thing you do is uh, you test drive it. You want to see how it feels, uh, how it drives, you know, what's the experience like, and then you make a purchase decision. Um, you know, product-led growth is, is, is very similar. It's show rather than tell concept where companies try to show their customers the value they will get before they actually make the purchase decisions. And in that way, a customer can decide whether that's the right product uh, or not. Now let's dig a little bit deeper into uh, you know, what is the definition of product-led growth. Uh, it's an end-user-focused growth model that relies on product itself as a primary driver of customer acquisition, activation, uh, and retention. And you know, some of the things that I've highlighted here are, are really key to product-led growth. One of them is it's an end-user focused. Uh, you know, traditionally, uh, you know, the, the decisions, uh, the buying decisions would come from top down. You know, maybe it would be the CTO of a company who would make a decision about buying a software. But that model has changed. You know, your end users are now empowered to make some of those decisions. And that's why it's really important to solve their needs and, and create products that, that give them value. Um, the second part of the definition is the growth model. You know, that, that's where the, the go-to-market motion comes into play, which is very different from you know, how your traditional sales-led uh, customer ac acquisition models were. This is more uh, about product, and you know, product itself drives growth. Um, and acquisition, activation, retention. And what that means is product is um, driving uh, all the way from discovery to activation, um, to retention. Um, the, the features are the ones that really uh, help users make these decisions. Now let's look at the evolution uh, of you know, uh, so sales led to product led growth. Uh, you know, in previous days, it used to be uh, sales led customer acquisitions. You know, your, your sales teams will go pitch um, you know, your, your products, um, they, they give a quote, 
uh, and then you know you're, they close the pipeline, uh, and that's when the the revenue is is booked. Um, and you know companies like Oracle and, and SAP um, they started with that. Then it it transformed to more of a hybrid approach where you know sales and product um, they partnered uh, more closely on on a hybrid approach, and it was more of a product assisted uh, approach driven by customer expectations. And um, now you know it has. Um, changed to a product-led world where product itself is the growth engine and features are essentially um, the primary drivers of this growth. And some companies such as Atlassian, Zoom, Slack, uh, they have pioneered uh, product-led growth in their space. And, and you, when you go to their website, you can see a lot of common uh, principles, you know, whether it is the freemium, uh, self-service way to sign up, um, or you know, how you get value quickly. Uh, now, before I um, go into how Atlassian does product-led growth, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you uh, may already be familiar with our products uh, and uh, and use it on a uh, on a weekly or a daily basis as well. Uh, you know, for example, the Jira, Confluence, Trello, uh, Ops Genie, Bitbucket. Uh, these are some of our products. Uh, for those who are who are not familiar with with Atlassian, um, you know, a quick background. Um, you know, Atlassian started in. Um, 2002, we are a global company headquartered in, in Sydney uh, with uh, 7,300 uh, plus employees. Uh, we are also a permanent remote company uh, with uh, over um, 20 products, and we serve about 80% of the Fortune 500 customers, and our products are used in over 190 countries, um, and we also do um, revenue north of $2 billion. Um, so that's a quick background about Atlassian. Now let me walk you through what a typical customer journey is uh, for our customers from a uh, product-led growth lens. And I may be using PLG uh, here and there, so it, it's essentially uh, just an acronym. So if you look at our, the journey, it all starts with a, uh, with a potential uh, customer going to Atlassian.com and, and browsing our products to, um, to learn more about it. Now that once they uh, identify different types of product, they want to deepen their knowledge to see whether this product solves their problem, and that's where the research comes into play um, through our, our videos, um, webinar. Uh, once they uh, understand the, uh, you know, how the products work and if it can solve the problem, then they try using our products for free. Um, there are no credit cards to sign up, so you can, um, everything is self-serve. Uh, you don't have to talk to any, uh, any uh, customer service rep. Uh, once you uh, tra start tr trying our product, um, the customers fall in love. And this is the, I would say, the most important thing uh, from a customer journey standpoint. Like, customers have to get value quickly, and once they do, they fall in love, then, you know, it becomes much easier for, for them to make these purchase, upgrade decisions. And, and once they do that, then um, we have other complementary products that can solve even more use cases, and that's when customers expand into more products, uh, invite their team members, uh, be more productive, uh, and then you know if, if they continue to see the value, then they uh, renew their subscription and, and retain and stay longer for us um, to continue to be more productive. So that's a typical uh, Atlassian customer journey. Now, why do companies need PLG? Uh, there are a lot of... Uh, advantages um, that companies get by using PLG. Uh, I, I, I want to talk about three things that, that are most important. Um, first is lower customer acquisition cost. You know, because companies are now spending less on sales and marketing, um, you know, they, their cost to acquire customers goes down significantly. Uh, and, you know, the product itself is good enough that it infl infiltrates the market, so you don't have to spend a lot of money on sales and marketing. Uh, the second uh, benefit is better customer experience. Users find value, um, you know, as they start using products. The onboarding is uh, very straightforward, um, and, and customers um, quickly see the value of the product before paying. Um, so it's a better customer experience. And, and third is, you know, companies scale much faster um, because, you know, now they're not constrained by labor-intensive sales or marketing um, employees. You don't have to hire these people to actually scale, you know. So um, and because of that, the companies can scale much faster. So those are some examples um, 
um, uh, benefits of PLG. The next topic I want to talk about is how Atlassian does product-led growth, and this is where um, I'm going to be spending most of my time in. Um, there are a few uh, PLG principles um, that are really important for any company to um, successfully adopt it. Um, and, and, you know, the way I've uh, taken these examples is I've mapped to some, some of these examples to these most important PLG principles to explain how, how we do it here. Um, the first one is designing for the end user. Um, this is really important. Um, you know, for any company, customers are our livelihood. Without happy customers, a company is doomed. Um, so considering that perspective, it's really important to understand the, the needs of these customers. And, you know, that philosophy has really helped Atlassian design products uh, for end users. Um, I want to give you a couple of examples of how, how we do that. Um, here on the screenshot you can see is, uh, is our voice of our customer program. This is a program that we, you know, we created at Atlassian where any, any re, uh, research team uh, or customer success folks can um, add feedback from customers directly into this, um, this tool. And, um, you know, and what this tool does, it, it then triages the, um, the feedback to different teams. So, for example, feature requests are triaged directly to product teams. If there are some churn insights about customers, you know, though, um, or any other feedback, you know, those are funneled into different uh, monthly um, meetings. Um, and then we also have um, you know, customer teams, wins, that are part of the tool itself. Um, so, pro so product teams have all this available to them um, to really understand, you know, the voice of the customer. And that really helps them in coming up with features and products to really um, provide value to our customers. Here is an example of a, t uh, of a Jira ticket that got triaged through this program to one of our PMs. Um, so as you can see, this was a customer request asking for a dark mode. Um, and the way this, uh, this typically works is, you know, as, as PMs automatically get these um, feature requests triaged, they also look at how many customers are asking for it, what does it really solve a customer need, and that really helps them prioritize um, these requests in, the, in their backlog. So this is an example of how, um, you know, feedback directly from our customers uh, is triaged um, to different product um, and other teams at Atlassian. The second uh, PLG principle I want to talk about is deliver value fast. Um, and, you know, when, when, cus when customers start using your products, uh, most of them, you know, typically sign up with the, the freemium version. It's really important uh, for any successful PLG company to uh, deliver that value to our, the customers within a few seconds or a few clicks. Um, let, let me ask you a question. Uh, some of you may have used our product, Trello. Um, how many clicks do you think it takes a user to get value after they sign up for uh, Trello? Any, any guesses? Okay, I, I heard five and, and nine. Um, so let's, let's look at it. Um, the answer is two. Um, and, you know, what, the way this works is when you sign up for, uh, for Trello, um, the first screenshot that you see is the one where we land um, our customers in, and we ha and from there you can you have most popular templates um, that are used, um, and that's also based on some recommendation models. Um, and once you click on one of those templates, for example, um, you know um, project management, you land on the second screen, which has boards and different um, swim lanes um, that you can already use, and uh, you can start collaborating with your uh, with your teammates on. Um, so within two clicks, um, you can use a board and, and get value from our product. Uh, and you don't have to pay for this. Um, um, it, it's, it's a part of their freemium plan. Uh, so that's an example uh, of how we, um, we click quickly deliver value. Another great example is if you have used Canva templates, uh, if you go to Google search and, and type any specific template, and then you know, you'll, uh, within a couple of clicks, you'll land on their um, on their website with a template selected, and you can start editing it. Um, so that's another example of how quickly you know, customers can, uh, can get value from products. The third uh, PLG principle that's really important is um, 
transparent pricing. Uh, you know, pricing should be very clear and straightforward um, to reduce friction in the buying experience. You don't want customers to think uh, about whether they are getting the right price or not, um, and, and so that you know they they build trust and then they can start using your products to get value. Now let's look at an example of how um, Atlassian does this. Um, this is our, our pricing page. Uh, as you can see, you know, we have different plans, free, standard, premium, enterprise. Each plan has a, a specific dollar amount associated with it. Uh, and then you can also change the number of users. Um, you know, if you, and, and the price automatically um, changes based on the number of users you select. Uh, per user per month pricing. You could also see monthly, and you can also see um, annual pricing. Uh, and uh, one, one of the advantages of this uh, compared to you know, the, the previous version was um, previously you know, our sales teams would give quotes to customers. And while um, you know, it benefited businesses, um, it, it really didn't benefit customers because not all customers were getting the same price. Um, so in, in some ways, you know, your customers were the ones who were getting screwed. With, with this transparent pricing, um, that has shifted now. You know, all customers get the same price um, and, and the best price we can offer them. The fourth PLG principle um, that I want to talk about is, is freemium model. Uh, and there are different flavors of, of freemium. Um, you know, there are some free trials which are limited uh, by number of days. And they you know, there are different goals for that. It's, um, it's, it's more, sometimes it's more focused on you know, uh, growing revenue quickly, whereas some of the other freemium models that you see are not time-bound, which means you know, customers can use your products for free uh, um, on an ongoing basis. Um, and then if, they, uh, if there are certain premium features uh, for which they have to pay to upgrade. Um, Zoom is a great example, like you know, you, the 45-minute calls, like you can use those calls on an ongoing basis without having to pay. Um, Atlassian also has adopted a um, freemium model um, where our customers can use our products without having to pay un unless you know, there are certain premium features or if you want to collaborate with more, more team members. And, and the goal of this is to really acquire customers quickly by opening up the top of the funnel uh, and really uh, gain market share quickly. Uh, and this is really helpful if companies are looking to scale quickly. Now let's look at you know the freemium launch that we did and uh, and how it went. Um, you know when uh, when we launched our freemium, you know the hy our hypothesis was we can acquire a lot of customers quickly by opening up the funnel to more and more users and reduce friction uh, for our customers because they don't really have to uh, pay and they can start using our products. And uh, the thinking was that you know uh, if we can actually retain these customers if they fall in love with our products. We will have more monthly active users using our products, and over time, uh, these monthly active users will will see more and more value and convert to purchases. Um, and you know, despite taking a short-term hit on on cost, because when you are giving free products, uh, these instances uh, actually have a cost associated with this. So this was a long-term um, um, strategy for us to see, uh, you know, if uh, if this would work. The, the chart that you see on the right side is, is the graph from the, from the launch. Um, and on the x-axis, you could see number of days. And on the y-axis, the monthly active users. The, the black uh, um, line that you see, that is a pre-freemium uh, launch. So these are uh, cohorts of customers who, d who are not part of the, uh, the experiment. And, and, and the three lines that you see above the black line are the customers who were included in the freemium experiment. So they actually saw the, um, the, the freemium um, trial version, and then they signed up for that. And the three, the three different colors are just different cohorts based on when they actually started using it. And because we also wanted to see if there was any seasonality impact to it. Um, and, and what we saw was, you know, the, um, the, we saw a significant increase in our, our monthly active users uh, after we launched, and that trend uh, continued. It didn't go down. And, and one of the key reasons why um, it didn't go down was we, it, we, we didn't stop after we just launched it. We kept optimizing the experience further um, because we knew we would be getting a lot of these lower quality users into the funnel. So uh, we kept improving the experience to help them understand the value of our products, additions, uh, and help them upgrade. 
Um, so that's um, so that's really important when you launch a, a free plan. Is you're going to get a lot of these uh, customers. Uh, at the same time, you also have to keep improving the experience for them. You know, as you think about the uh, these the quality of these these customers when you launch programs like Freemium, it's uh, there are a few dimensions that are really important. Uh, and you know, there is another terminology uh, which is. Um, you know, PLQ, just like you have marketing qualified leads, you have product qualified leads. Uh, and the, the difference in, in product qualified leads uh, is it's, it's just not a lead, but, it, you know, these are customers who are more likely to convert and use your products. Uh, so there are some guardrail metrics that are really important uh, to, to keep in mind. And I've listed a four of, four of uh, the most important metrics when you look at... Um, um, product qualified leads. The first one is any uh, any customer that signs up for your freemium version, um, you want to track if they are taking core actions. So, for example, you know, for one of our product confluence, uh, some of the core actions we look at is number of doc you know documents created or edited, um, comments added, etc. Because that really tells us if they if our customers are interacting with our product and getting value. The second dimension is um, solving for a use case. While um, you know, core actions, um, you know, these are leading indicators, you also want to see whether we are actually solving problems for our customers. And that's where use cases come to, my, come to mind. So what kind of metrics can you track to know that a customers are, are solving their problem? Maybe they uh, created a document, collaborated with their teammates, and published it. You know, that, that's a lot more valuable than just adding a comment. Or they connected um, their confluence with Slack, and now they are able to actually, uh, you know, um, edit or change permissions um, through Slack without having to go to confluence. Um, the third dimension is uh, expansion or invites. You know, if a if a customer uh, or a, you know, in this case, user really likes using your product, they're more likely to invite their team members to use it and to be more, more productive. So we look at uh, metrics like average team size. Um, and then uh, lastly, retention. Um, you know, it's, it's great that we have these customers um, using some of the core actions, solving their problems, but we also want to retain these customers. So we look at certain metrics around day seven, day four, um, day 28, um, uh, monthly active users as well. And you know, if you have all of these um, the likelihood of this user converting into a uh, long-term customer goes up significantly. Uh, so it's really important for, uh, for any product-led growth company to keep in mind and track these, uh, these other dimensions of signups um, as well very closely. Now I want to share some of the key takeaways uh, um, from, from my experience um, here at Atlassian. Uh, the first one is reducing friction in the um, in the sign-up process to try your product, and I can't stress the importance of, uh, of this enough, but really uh, the, the most important thing is to create an experience, a self-serve experience where your customers can um, discover your product, sign up, and use it. Any cu customer inter interaction with sales or, or chat, treat it as a bug. Really look at what kind of questions your customers are asking. You know, share that with your product managers. Um, and and then use that to improve the onboarding experience further, uh, and and also track how much time are your customers spending at each step of the of the funnel. You know, is it are, are your customers taking two days to sign up? Is it like two hours? Um, so really having that deep understanding of your um, your uh, sign up funnel is really important. And you know you can look at the entire customer life cycle through that, um, even extending uh, beyond to emails. Um, the second key takeaway is investing in R and D. You know you might ask, how are we able to keep the flywheel going? One key element, you know, uh, from Atlassian model that makes us unique is we spend more on our R and D as a percentage of revenue. Uh, and, and less on sales and marketing than any of um, our peers largely in the software enterprise space. And the reason is really simple, you know, uh, we want to build best products at lower cost uh, and thus progress the flywheel. 
Um, if, you, if you look at the chart here um, on, on the right side, you, you can see that um, the bottom graph uh, Atlassian, it's about 35%. Um, of revenue going into R and D, and whereas com you know companies like Zoom, Slack um, have a, a lower percentage uh, compared to that, and and that is what really drives you know our acquisition, conversion, expansion. You know this uh, a lot of this goes into investing in in uh, in products, growth teams to to really um, build build out the and uh, and continue to optimize the funnels further. We, we have growth teams at each stage of the, the customer journey, you know, all the way from acquisition. We have teams that, that look at activation. Uh, we have teams that look at retention. We have teams that look at upgrades, purchases. So you're, op, you know, you're optimizing as well as coming up with these step-changing bets throughout the customer journey to, um, to make sure that you know, we can um, grow the product seamlessly. Um, so those are some of my key to key takeaways uh, from my experience at Atlassian. Um, and uh, I want to uh, share one more thing here, um, which, which ties well with this slide. You know, you might ask, uh, you know, sales and marketing, um, well, you know, you're not spending that much. Like, is, are they not really that important? Um, so I want, so the third key takeaway here is that, you know, I, um, Sales and marketing and, and customer success, all these teams play a very critical role in a successful product-led mindset. Uh, even though the number of uh, teams are, are smaller, um, but the impact is pretty significant. Um, and you know, for any uh, successful PLG, all these teams have to come together uh, and, and let product drive growth. And, and how do our teams do that? Um, so marketing creates content-led experiences uh, for demand generation. You know, we have webinars, we have blogs, we have videos. Um, all these uh, resources, you know, um, start with product at the center of it and, and how pro um, some of the features uh, benefit our customers. The second is sales. You know, our sales teams, um, they use product usage signals uh, to generate leads and assistance. Um, um, uh, one example... Um, that I um, want to share is um, they look at you know what kind of um, interactions the customers are having with our products. Maybe our customers are using a lot of like manual features, and we have um, you know automated features in a, let's say a different edition, like a premium edition. We have automated roadmaps, and if our customers are not using it, that data is very useful for our sales teams to then you know um, send communication or, or notifications or. Uh, or emails to customers to show value of some of these automated um, features, uh, and that can help um, our customers get more value because it helps them more productive, and then the the teams can uh, also use some of that to upsell our customers. The third um, third team is customer success, uh, and you know. If you look at the, the funnel, the first comes the marketing, then we have the sales teams, and then you know, as customers start using our products, then our customer success teams comes into play. And they, um, they also use these signals to ensure that customer is gaining value over time uh, and, and using more and more um, um, features that benefit them. And some of the ways they do this is um, through these uh, customer usage patterns, they can identify uh, you know, if this customer is doing um, using features that our power users use, uh, and if if so, you know, how can we get them more value? Uh, or if they are not using it, you know, maybe they have a higher likelihood of churn. So how how can we help them become our long-term customers and not churn? So um, so that that way, all these teams have to come together um, and and communicate effectively, um, and um, and then drive growth. Uh, even in experimentation that we do a lot, you know, we, we're talking to all these teams uh, and then we are coming up with ideas on how we can improve the products further. Um, so those are some key takeaways uh, from my experience at Atlassian. Uh, I, I hope, um, um, you know, some, some of these uh, models and examples um, you can take back to your products and companies and experiment uh, and really scale growth for your products and company. Thank you.